Hello, you're listening to Heart and Soul Podcast, a Christian podcast powered by 88.1 Lemberg. This is Heart and Soul's 14th podcast, diving into the connections of faith and science. As always, before I begin my podcast, I am going to open with a prayer. Dear Creator God, I am seeking to understand more about you and the way you made the world. I know your thoughts are as high above mine as the heavens are above the earth, but I also know you love to fill us with your wisdom when we ask for it. I come to you knowing you have all the power and authority. It is only when I fear you and place my mind under yours that I can really know anything. Thank you, Jesus, for being the root and foundation of science. Thank you for translating God's truth. Please guide my thoughts and actions to the best way to uncover the truth. Bless me with the wisdom to see what natural people would never dream of looking for. Most of all, Lord God, I ask that all I discover may reveal more glory for you. May we recognize in a deeper way your genius, orderliness, and beauty. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Science is pretty cool. It explains a variety of unknown facts on the world around us and the way things work. It explains the intellectual and practical activity encompassing the structure and behavior of the physical world and the natural world. Now, a big misconception when it comes to Christianity and science is that these two don't connect. That they oppose each other and are against each other and aren't on the same page. But in reality, they do connect. There are connections drawn between religion and science. And someone can both be religious and a scientist. And so today I'll be talking about a few of the connections between religion and science. But before I talk about these connections, let's look at the definition of faith. Because faith is one of the most misunderstood words in the religious vocabulary. So the definition of faith contains two aspects in intellectual assent and trust. Intellectual assent is believing something to be true, while trust is actually relying on the fact that something is true. For example, intellectual assent is recognizing that a chair is a chair and agreeing that it is designed to support the person who sits on it, while trust is actually sitting in the chair and believing it will support us. And understanding these two aspects of faith is crucial because many people believe certain facts about Jesus Christ and that we would intellectually agree with the facts that the Bible declares about Jesus. But knowing the facts to be true is not what the Bible means by faith. Because we not only need to believe that the facts are true, but we need to trust in them as well. We need to believe in them and commit our lives to it. But when it comes to science, we begin to lose the idea of faith. We begin to lose trust in what the Bible says. Because many people in the Christian faith, and even some people who don't believe in God, question religious beliefs because there is no scientific proof within the Bible. And if we have no proof, then how can we believe? If there is no tangible evidence, how can we believe in God? But there are some deep connections in the faith because God gives us these connections between science and religion. But before I get into that, let me give you an example of everyday life. Think about when you meet someone new. They explain who they are, their past, their interests, and their being. Now, we have no proof of what they're saying is true. We, we don't know whether they're telling us the truth, or to believe in them, or have faith that this is who they really are. But do we need scientific proof for this? Are we going to go out and then do a bunch of research and a background check on this person after we meet it? Or do we have faith that this person is who they are and who they say that they are? You see, one reason that people view faith and science in opposition is because our culture pits faith against reason, as if the more faith-filled you are, the less reasonable you are. Faith and reason in the minds of so many people are polar opposites, never to be combined and never to be reconciled. 
In this way, our culture often has false alternatives. Either live a life of faith or live a life of reason. And to be religious is to reject reason, and to be reasonable is to reject religion. And simply what this is, is the double truth theory. And what this means is that science falls into one basket and faith falls into another. And they are seen as two completely different baskets that rarely touch and rarely meet. But this is wrong. Because we can live a life of reason and we can live a life of faith. Because we are surrounded by a world of science with physics, evolutionary biology, cosmology, and so much more. You see, in Genesis, it claims that God created the world in seven days. But science indicates that the universe, including the Earth, developed over billions of years. In the Christian tradition, the creation story has been interpreted in a variety of ways, both literal and figurative. Some theologians understand the Genesis account in a literal way. But for the most part, Christian theologians, including Thomas Aquinas and Pope John Paul II, interpreted Genesis as the teaching of the truth about creation in a non-literal, non-scientific way. Pope John Paul II pointed out that the Bible itself speaks to us of the origin of the universe and its makeup not in order to provide us with scientific treaties, but in order to state the correct relationship of man with God and with the universe. Sacred scripture wishes simply to declare that the world was created by God, and in order to teach this truth, it expresses itself in the terms of cosmology in use and time of the writer. Dr. Scott Hahn had also pointed out that we might misunderstand the point of the seven days spoken in Genesis. You see, we need to understand the Hebrew word for seven. And the Hebrew word for seven is the same word used for making a covenant. So when it is said that God created the world in seven days, the text is communicating to its original readers that God had created the world in a covenantal relationship with the divine. Another thing that Genesis talks about that often gets pinned against science is the story of Adam and Eve. Adam being the first man and Eve being the first woman. Science indicates that all life, including human life, evolved over millions of years. The incompatibility of Genesis and the evolutionary species causes some people to think that religious belief is incompatible with science. If the first man and the first woman were created by God, then it did not evolve over millions of years. Because if life evolved over millions of years, then there couldn't be a first man or a first woman. But this isn't entirely logical thinking, because one could believe that Genesis provides a play-by-play account of how God did things over a seven, 24-hour set of days. One could believe it in the non-literal view, suggesting that there is no contradiction in believing both Genesis and evolution, or the physical development of man, providing that one first believes that there was a first man and a first woman. We could think about it in the way that God did create a first man and a first woman, but evolution nudged us along, improving humanity and improving who we are, because we are not the same as our ancestors hundreds and hundreds of years ago. But that doesn't mean God had no part in partaking in the creation of our lives. Of course, the Christian church does not require that we believe in evolution or any other view taught by any scientist. However, We still can. One can still believe in evolution and in science and still remain a faithful Christian. Because God gives us these connections between faith and science. And sometimes they are hard to find, but they are there. And he gives us these connections because we are people full of logic and reason. We need logic and reason to understand how the world works, to understand the things around us. And this way we can draw the connections from our spiritual lives, our scientific lives, and our everyday lives. Reason is a tool that was given to us by God to allow us to draw conclusions and inferences from other information, such as the information that he has given us. Because reason is an essential part of Christianity. God tells us to reason in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. 
Come now, let us reason together, said the Lord. Though your sin are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be like wool. And what this is showing is that no matter what is going on in our everyday lives, and no matter where we are in our faith journey, that it is okay to reason. We do not need to throw out science and religion or separate them out into two different baskets. Science and religion are connected and they can be seen as together. Now, although we have looked at some connections between religion and science, there are also some connections with our scientists that we know well. Einstein didn't believe in the Christian faith and he didn't see any connections between the church or science or have any spiritual understanding of the faith. But near the end of his life, he wrote a letter. Einstein said, Everyone who is seriously involved in the pursuit of science becomes convinced that a spirit is manifest in the law of the universe, a spirit vastly superior to man. He continued to say, The situation may be expressed by an image. Science without religion is lame. Religion without science is blind. You see, for a long time, Einstein turned away from God. But with this letter, it may show that later in his life, he may have begun to see spiritual connections within faith and science. Because as we grow up and as we mature through our lives, we begin to learn so much more. We learn facts, we collect data, we grow in our spiritual life. And then we are tasked to put it all together. Because God wants us to understand all that we can about him. Through reason, through faith, through friendship, he wants us to understand his existence, his perfection, and the fact that he is endowed with intellect and will, his beauty, and so much more. A while back in one of my podcasts, I talked about using your gifts as part of your faith and to live out your faith life. Some people are given the gift of being really good at science, being really good at biology or chemistry, anthropology. And God wouldn't give us these gifts if there weren't any connections in the world around us. Because they are there. It's just sometimes really hard to see. But we can use our gifts of understanding the faith and understanding science to put the connections together and see how much God is connected in the world around us. And we can see so much more of how those connections are there. Because what we can see is that we can be both people of faith and science. But I want you to tell me, where do you see these connections? How do you see the connections between faith and science? Or how has it influenced your life? Tell me on my Facebook page called Heart and Soul at 88.1 The Berg. I hope you all have a good day and a blessed week. Good luck. Godspeed. It never hurts to pray.